Hello! In the last video, I showed you some Amos code to procedurally generate an outline to a game. By now, you may have seen my new game, Hop to the Top, Bunny's Revenge. I really wanted to make another Halloween game like I did last year, and if you don't know what this game's about, well, then here's the trailer. During Easter, we brought you the fun rabbit game Hop to the Top, but so, so, so many rabbits drowned. This Halloween, the tables have been turned. Having fallen into an abandoned rabbit warren, now full of graves. Somehow your fall awakens these rabbits, but they're not so fluffy anymore. Your only hope for survival is to try to climb back to the surface and escape. From Rob Smith Dev comes a new puzzle game for your Amiga, with music from Virgil and graphics by John Benz. Hop to the top. Bunny's Revenge. Featuring 68 billion procedurally generated levels, turn by turn play, increasing levels of difficulty, bonuses, pickups, weapons, and tools, boulder blocking puzzles, online high scores with game retry, keyboard and joystick controls, five different types of zombie rabbit, each with their own attack pattern, and so much more. Have you got what it takes to survive? Games written in Amos tended to have a bit of a bad reputation back in the day, and I suspect the reason was because Amos made the game so easy to create, a lot of very substandard games were released. Now as you probably realised, this game is also written in Amos, and in this video, we're going to take a look and see how it's made. However, it's far too complex to explain in one go, and a lot of the concepts used in this game I've covered in previous videos, so I've decided to only talk about some of the more interesting parts. The main play area of this game actually uses a 64 colour extra half bright display mode. The way this mode works is you get a normal 32 colours, and then another set that are exactly half as bright as the first. The only way you can change the colours 32 to 63 is to change the colours 0 to 31. It's a clever hardware hack to give you more colours, but it's also useful to create other effects. If you remember back to a previous video, the Amiga display is separated into different bit planes. For each plane, the number of colours on screen doubles. With a single plane, you can display two colours. Two planes, four colours, and three planes giving you eight colours. Each plane literally has a bit set for each pixel on the screen. The great advantage to this way of managing graphics was memory conservation, meaning the less colours, the less memory needed. The downside is that to change a single pixel on screen, you have to write to multiple locations. In this case, three. It's not all downsides though, there are some tricks you can use here, Here's a screenshot from my game. As I mentioned before, it's a 64 colour extra half bright mode screen, but I use a few tricks to create it. To speed up rendering, the background is only drawn once, and I draw it off screen and copy it in when needed. The background and borders of my maze happen to only use colours 0 to 15. I store a copy of the walls and the surrounding background in a separate 16 colour screen, and it's faster for rendering all those background tiles that way as well. Every time I want to draw it to the screen, the Amos screen copy command will only copy four of the six bit planes, so that's a speed saving right away. Sure, I need to make sure the other two bit planes are clear as well, but we won't worry about that. But there's another trick you can use with extra half bright mode. Because the second 32 colours is half as bright as the first, we can produce a sort of shadow effect. Now back to the game screen. When you press fire, the in-game menu appears. Notice how the game background darkened? Well, this is really easy to do. I've separated out the six bit planes here so you can see what's going on on each. And with a 64 colour screen there are six, zero to five. If we fill the fifth bit plane with binary ones, then we effectively just quickly added 32 to every colour, shifting them into the darkened extra half bright colour range. After we've done this, we can just draw our menu over the top. I used this trick in last year's Halloween game. Now I've also used a similar trick like this for the ghosts. See them here? There's a trick to how these are drawn. The eyes, as you might expect, are just pasted icons, but the darkened areas? Well, Amos has another alternative to icons and bobs called blocks. These are like temporary images, but they have a special power. If I make a ghost outline using colour 1 and paste it to the screen, it works as expected. If I use colour 32, we just get black. But, if I use the put block command and specify which bit plane I want to actually draw, we can actually just write to bit plane 5, triggering the shadow trick as before. I'm also using this to give a dark outline around the player. Now all this drawing on a 64 colour screen is a lot slower, so for the first time I'm going to use some custom Amos extensions. 
The Turbo Plus, also known sometimes as Craft 2, extension comes with some very interesting commands. And the ones I was most interested with were the replacements for the paste icon commands. Prefixed with an F, I guess for fast, these optimised drawing routines can speed up your drawing by 2 to 3.5 times, faster than their Amos counterparts. And whilst not massively faster, I'll take every extra little bit of speed I can get. Now another strange thing I discovered while making this game was to do with the Amos picture compression routines. I discovered that sometimes a smaller screen can actually compress to a larger file than a larger screen. I discovered this when converting the sprite sheets for the intro animation sequence by John to save some disk space. After relaying out some of the content into what I thought was a smaller and more optimised layout, the compress file was twice the size. So I wrote a little routine that would compress the original image, and then increase the height by one pixel at a time, and then recompress it. For some images, this shaved off maybe 30 bytes. But look here, just adding one extra row half the size of the compressed picture. The final game doesn't have much disk space left, so every kilobyte was sacred. And one final last trick, did you notice that the zombie rabbit eyes appear to blink? Keep watching. This is actually achieved in a really, really simple way. It's actually using the Amos rainbow commands to change a single colour. Now I've modified this so you can see the background colour and see the effect. I have some code that hops it around the screen to different lines. What you're listening to right now is the fantastic background music for the game, kindly created for me by Virgil. Now, anyone who's watched my previous videos will have seen me create games before and usually convert these ProTracker modules into Amos Music Banks. The problem with this is, the Amos Music Bank format just isn't that great. It doesn't support all the wonderful effects within ProTracker. With the Amos Music Bank format, it sounds like this. Yeah, that's pretty bad. So I decided to keep it as a ProTracker module. But Amos's Pro Tracker routines aren't very compatible either. Take a listen. Not as bad as the Amos music system. Sounds out of tune though, and some of the effects are just wrong. So I need an alternative. I already had the Craft and Musicraft libraries installed from literally years ago when it was included on a CU Amiga cover disc. Now, this library comes with the support for MED, but we need the external MED library to play that, and we just don't have the disc space. It also has its own sound tracker playback system, and, well, if you thought the previous versions were bad, well, you're in for a worse surprise. This is horrible! I suspect Virgil would literally stop talking to me if I used this. Thankfully, there's one absolutely amazing alternative, the AMCAF extension. This library comes with a host of new commands, but most interesting are the ProTracker ones, and according to the documentation, it boasts CIA timing or VBL timing, volume control, channel toggling, VU meters, possibility to receive signals from the module, supports all ProTracker effect commands, and playback of sound effects along with the music. So this should reproduce the module correctly. Well, to do justice to Virgil's efforts, I ran several tests and compared them to ProTracker, and I couldn't tell the difference. I think I'll be using this for future games too. Because it takes over the Amos music system, it also needs its own commands for playing back sound effects, and it doesn't disappoint there either. It even has a smart sample playback option where it will automatically pick the voice based on what's not currently being used. One of the challenges of this game was that I wanted it to run on a 1 megabyte Amiga. Now this isn't that hard, but a typical A500 of the day would most likely have had 512k of chip RAM and 512k of fast RAM. Now chip RAM is required for graphics, music and sound effects as well as other things like DMA. But with fast RAM, so called because the CPU has exclusive access to it, you can't. This means I would need to fit all the sound samples, musics and graphics inside the first 512k of RAM. This was tricky because the music was 118 kilobytes and the sound effects 112 leaving around 280 for screens and everything else. Now Amos is pretty clever about its memory management. For example, if I load a compressed picture, if it can, it will put it in fast RAM, only using the chip RAM when you choose to decompress it. But with all the content visible on screen and the icon banks for the game graphics, I just couldn't make enough room for the sound effects as well. Now I only needed a solution for this if there wasn't enough chip RAM, and I had an idea. I'm not sure if I was the first to do this either. Thankfully, the format of the Amos sample bank is now documented. So I decided to load the Amos sound sample bank into fast RAM. When I wanted to play a sound, I just reserved a small amount of chip RAM, copied the sound data there, and then played it. The largest sound I had was just under 12k, so this would be quite a big saving, and it worked really well. So, graphics and sound sorted, on to the next problem. 
and I knew when I started thinking about this game that I really wanted to include an online high score table. Now sure, you can do this by presenting a code which can be typed in on a website, but I wondered if there was a way to allow Amos to reach out to the internet. Now John Bintz, who created the nice graphics for this game, also created an Amos extension called BSD Socket that allows you to connect to the internet. Rather than me explain all of it, here's a short clip from one of his videos. I'm sure you'll recognise his graphical style. And published. I hope someone uses my networking library. Wait, I made a what? When? I wrote a lot of code, like a lot of code, in Amos Basic, a pretty advanced programming language made for the Amiga computer. Role-playing games, timed karaoke lyric playback, web browsers, and dozens of other things, either for myself or for publishing on the early internet. One of the things I wrote towards the end of my time on the Amiga was a very basic networking library. I got enough of it working to make a connection to a server on the internet, and then I stopped. But I published what I'd finished, and I moved on from using Amiga computers daily. But I never moved on in my heart. 23 years passed. I learned Perl, Java, Ruby, PHP, C++, Python, JavaScript, Clojure. I built web pages, mobile applications, web servers, desktop applications. And all that time, that library was out there, all alone, just waiting for someone to use it, to give it a shot, to see just how much young me knew about socket-based networking on the Amiga. Turns out I didn't know that much. Someone emailed me asking if I was the developer of this library and, upon looking at the cringe-inducing readme and documentation, realized that, yes, I did write a semi-functioning networking library for Amos in 1998. I really like his videos, and you can watch more from here and the link in the video description. Not only are they really well put together, but you've got to love those animations. Now I'm not going to cover the server side, just the Amos side, so I'll show you how to set up a simple server request and fetch a web page, or in our case, high scores. But first, a little background. Web servers typically listen on port 80 or 443 for secure connections. Now we won't be using the secure side, which is fine for us. A TCP connection is made to the server and a simple query is sent. And this is a typical query. This line tells the server which page or resource we want. The keyword get literally means what it says. This line informs the server which website we want to pull from. In today's crazy world, many websites exist on the same server. This line tells the server that after it's finished sending us the page to close the connection. Now each of these lines is terminated with a carriage return and line feed. And we must also add a blank line to the request to tell the server that we've finished. If all goes well, the server sends us a response. The first part tells us if it was successful. In this case, a code 200 means everything worked okay. This is where the famous 404 gets sent. Skipping some of these lines, this one tells us how much content we can expect to receive. And, like the request, after a blank line, the content or body is sent. Sounds simple, right? Well, in Amos, this translates into the following code. First, we set up the library and request a new socket from which to make the connection. This line tells the system we don't want to wait for any commands to complete. Now, because we don't want any of these commands to wait or block, this code can be run quite passively. So, I've put the main bulk of this into a separate procedure that we can just keep calling until it finishes or fails. First, we need to actually connect to the server on its IP address. And this command asks the internet, hey, for this domain name, what is the IP address? Then we try to connect to that IP address on port 80. Because of telling the system we don't want to wait, the connection will have not happened yet. So we have to call this function to monitor the connection status. Once we connect, we'll construct our request, just like we did before, and send it. We then keep pulling content from the server, storing it in a memory bank until it disconnects. Finally, we can analyse this information to see if the request was successful. Now I'm not going to tell you what I'm sending or receiving back, as I'm using this to send the high scores and I don't want you trying to fake them. But talking to the internet really can be that simple. If you want to see more of what you can do here, then follow the links in the video description for the repository where this extension is stored. Now no large project ever goes by without some kind of strange problem, and the Boogie Amos Pro compiler caused me a lot of headaches. This game, being just under 8,000 lines long, came with quite a few. The first one I discovered really surprised me. The Amos compiler can generate three different types of output, one for Workbench, one for the CLI, and one to use within Amos. Now I'd assumed the difference between creating a Workbench and CLI executable was that they just saved the icon for the Workbench one. Well, you know what they say about assumptions. 
I discovered after copying the game to hard disk that it would appear to load fine but then immediately quit. However, if I ran it from the CLI, it worked perfectly. It took me ages to realise that the XEs produced by the Workbench or CLI option weren't actually identical. The other issue I had was so bad that it started crashing the AMOS compiler itself, or if it didn't do that, it would crash shortly after exiting it. The worst part was the code it created behaved differently to the original AMOS source code, so somehow it had gotten very, very confused. I had to completely rewrite that section in a different way to get around this. Without doing this, the high scores would have had to be removed. Now, for those of you who haven't seen this game yet, here's me playing it. now sick of this game having spent the best part of 5 months making it and it's taken up quite a lot of my free time. And I need to get back onto other things. I have several other games available that I've made too, and they all come with Amos source code and tutorials, so feel free to take a look. Now I just want to give a shout out to John and Virgil for their amazing work on the graphics and music for this game. I hope you found this interesting, and I hope you enjoy playing the game. If you want to say thanks for writing it, then send me a copper via Ko-Fi. Or, if you want to help further, then consider supporting me on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.